welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah, Sarah Gray from Funky Fossil and today I was sharing a video as part of the um, video hop for Crafting Together with All Brands. So um, a group of the um, fabulous creatives from, uh, from that Facebook group get together every month with a single theme or challenge and we uh, see what we can come up with to share with you. Now this month um, the theme is uh, kind of male inspired projects and cards because um, I think that's that's often a subject that um, as crafters we struggle with so we thought um, we would try and give you some ideas and inspiration on how to make projects that are going to uh, really appeal to male members of your family, friends etc. And um, that really works well for me at Funky Fossil because I've got um, two teenage boys and a husband, all of who love their gaming, music, sports. So quite a lot of the um, the products that I bring to you as part of that range uh, really work well for a male audience. And today's project, I'm going to focus on gaming. Um, and I'm just going to quickly talk you through the products that I'm going to use in the project. And uh, apologies in advance because I've already filmed the project um, before realising that my microphone wasn't working, so I had no audio. Um, so I'm now going to kind of go back and do a voiceover. So if um, if the kind of words and hand gestures don't quite uh, match up, that's because I'm speaking after the event. Um, but hopefully it will all still work and make sense to you. So this is the project that I made. Um, I've used one of our um, MDF um, kind of art boards. This is a, a hex board. Um, and I've also used some MDF elements, um, which I call kind of hexy bits, which have been laser cut. And you can see I've already painted these up. Um, in terms of what I used to paint them up, I use a spray paint. Uh, let me just get that. Um, it is, uh, I used a Liquitex spray paint, cadmium yellow deep hue. Um, when I'm um, painting kind of slightly more delicate MDF elements, um, I quite like to use um, a spray paint because it gives you that kind of fine coating of colour and it's not as, um, doesn't have as much of a tendency to kind of clog and create blobs uh, as when I try and use a brush um, over over those kind of thinner pieces. So that's um, that's what I've used to colour the um, the hexagons. What else have I used? So um, the kind of the main uh, stamped elements are from our A6 Gamer set, which is one of our older stamp sets, but still a very, very popular one. Uh, I think uh, for obvious reasons, you can see why that appeals to lots of folk looking to make um, particularly male cards, but of course, um, um, obviously for, for, for both genders. Um, I've used some uh, of our A7 stamps, again, that go I think go well with the theme. I've used a binary code and I've used the A7 circuitry stamp. And I use those, uh, particularly in the background, you can see I've used binary code here stamping over the, the um, MDF. Um, but I use it in the background when we do some collage to make some... Um, some kind of collage paper uh, on rice paper that I use to stick down to the hexagon. Uh, this is indigo blue blank rice paper, which I've uh, stamped and stenciled over. Uh, in terms of other uh, products I've used, I've used some of our stencils. Let me just get this out of the way. They're now very grubby stencils, as you can see. So I've used our grid stencil, a really versatile one. Uh, broken radius. I've used broken radius on the back of the, the hexagon board because I do like to ensure that I've decorated both the front and back so it looks great from um, wherever you position it in a room. And I've used our number lines uh, stencil and I've used some of our mini stencils. I can't locate all of them now but uh, here's one of them which is um, just these crosses which again I think work well with the theme. In terms of uh, other supplies, obviously I've used some acrylic paints. Uh, I've used some Dina Wakely paints, cheddar and lapis, lapis, uh, and I've used an indigo blue uh, acrylic paint, which is Stroke of Midnight, really rich, deep blue. 
but I think that's pretty much it for me. Um, I um, I adhere my rice paper with some matte medium. I use Liquitex, but any matte medium, any paints, um, obviously goes without saying, will all do the job for you. And um, before I even started filming, I'd um, covered the hexagon board with gesso just to give it a nice tooth and finish. Oh, and the final thing I should mention before we get into the project itself is in terms of creating the um, the sentiment or the, the wording on the, uh, the project, I've used our Ransom Note Alpha dies because I thought it kind of worked well with that quirky offbeat look that I was going for. Uh, I'm going to um, try and locate the base, which I've painted and put somewhere that I can't um, currently find. But when you see a picture of the finished project, it will have a base, I can promise you. OK, right. Well, I think I've run through everything I've used. Uh, I say apologies again for the slightly out of sync voice and uh, and video. But hopefully you enjoy this project as much as I did making it. And um, thank you very much for joining me and for watching. Let's get going. So we're going to start the project by creating some collage paper, uh, stamping and stenciling onto the um, to the rice paper, which you've got. I've got down on just some plain white copy paper here on the glass mat. I've just used the copy paper underneath it partly to add a bit of a padding for the stamping, but also so you can see what it is I'm doing. Uh, and there's a bit of contrast there. So I'm inking up the A7, this is the binary code stamp with uh, archival, black archival ink. Um, as you can see, I'm not inking the whole of the stamp. I'm um, stamping fairly randomly and um, also uh, not worried about getting kind of a perfect impression. This is all just very much about creating a background that is going to be torn up and collaged onto the um, to the MDF. I've not put the stamp on an acrylic block. It's just on the um, the clear acetate, um, just to give me the chance to kind of manoeuvre it around easily and not necessarily get a full impression every time. So I'm going to kind of carry on with um, that stamp and also with the circuitry stamp as well that I am. Um, showed you at the beginning of the video. The, the, uh, the archival link, of course, is um, the best option to go with here for uh, stamping to create collage paper because it won't move uh, when you um, put matte medium over it. So just think about the ink that you're using um, for the job that you want it to do. So what I'll do is um, speed up the video here um, and you'll see me adding more stamping and also uh, adding some stenciling and you'll see me spraying through the stencils with some uh, Liquitex spray paints. I think I use black and dark blue. Again, it's an acrylic paint so that will ensure that it's permanent on the rice paper for when I um, tear it up to make some collage so you'll see the the kind of this um, fairly random piece of um, color collage fodder coming together There you can see the, the paper, the rice paper that I've created um, and uh, when we use matte medium and adhere that down to the, um, the MDF that will become um, relatively translucent so it will create a lovely, um, a lovely subtle layer on, uh, as a first layer on the MDF. So what I need to do now to create that kind of collage is just to remove segments of the rice paper. And you can see I'm just using a um, wet brush here to um, to kind of wet the, the paper that I want to tear out um, and, and just gently um, kind of 
get sections out of the um, out of the rice paper. It just gives you a nice feathery look to have that um, water effect as a way of um, cutting the or yeah it is cutting the rice paper. Um, so you don't have any kind of straight harsh lines on the um, the collage that you you stick down. So I'm going to go ahead now and take out several several sections of the rice paper, trying to pick out areas where you've got a, a kind of variety of the patterns in the one piece. And I will then um, put some matte medium onto the hexagon board, uh, adhere the rice paper down with the matte medium and um, and then brush over the top of the rice paper with uh, with a bit of matte medium as well, just to seal it uh, and stop it from um, kind of lifting when we add acrylic paint. Uh, I'm using a Liquitex uh, matte medium, but any any uh, medium that you have in your stash will do the job. Um, and uh, this is really all about getting a bit of interest down onto the project to break that whiteboard up. Uh, before we go over the top of it and add some colour. A lot of this won't be visible in the final uh, project, but quite often these kind of rice papers do peek through in unexpected ways. So I do think it's always really well worth putting this layer down um, on your project, uh, even if some of it um, disappears as we add further layers over the top. Now, in terms of those overhanging bits of rice paper, you've got a choice here. You can either, as I end up doing, uh, adhere them to the back of the project. Um, or if you don't uh, want them to be showing on the back of your project, then just let them dry and you can either trim or sand them off to get a nice clean edge. So I'm about to go in here and uh, add some acrylic paint over the top of our collage. As you'll see, um, I've added a little bit more stamping um, on top of the uh, the rice paper, um, just with uh, black archival ink. So I've added some of the uh, really cute little Space Invaders from the Gamer set and also the Chevron elements. So that's just gone straight onto the MDF uh, and the rice paper. Um, and it adds a little bit more interest and also um, just continues that gaming theme as we go through. The acrylic paints that I'm going to use on the uh, hex board are the Dina Wakely Lapis and the uh, Dark Blue from Indigo Blue Stroke of Midnight. And you'll see me, I'm diluting them well with water brush, uh, with, with the water spray, the uh, Dina Wakely and the indigo blue are quite heavy body paints, so I want them to be a lot more fluid. And I'm going to apply it very loosely, and you'll, what you'll see me do now over the course of the next uh, few minutes is um, apply the paint, spray it with water, lift some up, and back and forth really until I'm happy with the effect. Br broadly going for something slightly lighter in the centre and dark around the edges. Um, and um, I'm not worrying too much about uh, what I'm covering up in the process here uh, and also um, wanting to um, just try uh, just um, see how the areas with the rice paper on take the colour slightly differently to the um, to the gessoed MDF. So I shall speed up the video here while you watch me uh, apply and remove uh, paint. 
one thing just to note that you saw me do there is where I felt where and if I feel I've got too much paint on those tabs at the bottom of the hex board uh, I tend to try and wipe that away just to ensure that the MDF doesn't swell too much and I have problems at the end of the at the end of the process in um, slotting that into the base. Okay, so we've got the paint down on um, our uh, MDF now and uh, what I do off camera is just use the spare paint you can see still left on the um, glass mat and uh, paint the back of the um, back of the hex board as well or I should just say as well I'm just adding some dark blue splatters as well over the top um, to add a bit of variation of colour uh, where it's a bit lighter in the centre of the uh, centre of the board, and then I go on to uh, paint the back of the MDF uh, board off camera, and you can see that you can still see um, some of the stamping um, and uh, the collage that sits underneath those colours. So you've got that you've got that visual interest. I've tried to go slightly dark around the edges, um, but keeps keep a bit of a, a bit lighter in the centre of the uh, of the hexagon, just so that we can see then the further elements that are going to be added to the project. So this is what I did on the back of the hexagon. I say not wanting to waste the paint, and initially I was thinking I was going to add some stenciling with texture paste. And then I decided that actually it would be more sensible to add it with acrylic paint instead, particularly because on the front of the hexagon board, I'm going to add those MDF elements. So um, I want them to have a reasonably flat surface to adhere to. So to give myself some contrast with the dark blue that's on there already, I've used the Broken Radius stencil with some of the Dina Wakely Cheddar paint. And I'm going to now add some stenciling to the front of the hexagon board using the same paint. And I'm using a, um, a sponge dauber, kind of a, a foam um, blending uh, tool to pick up the uh, pick up the paint with. I'm just really kind of showing here how the um, the hexagons in that bright, uh, strong yellow are going to contrast nicely against the dark blue we've got down there already. So I'm going to start with the number line stencil. You can see it's already a very 
dirty stencil from our collage papers earlier. I've not bothered to clean off the um, spray paint that's on there. It won't move with um, the acrylic going over the top of it. Um, and then the, the key really to using um, paint through a stencil is to try and ensure that the, um, the foam or the brush, whatever you're using to apply the paint, um, is uh, is not too wet. So this is a relatively heavy body paint which makes it easy to stencil with. Um, but you can see I'm repeatedly tapping the paint uh, on the um, out onto the uh, media mat just to get both an even coverage across the foam and also to ensure that I don't have too much moisture sitting on the surface of the foam so that when I um, apply it, dab it through the stencil, it doesn't bleed, the paint doesn't bleed over underneath. It doesn't matter if it does a little bit, but I want the um, numbers here to still remain fairly visible. So I don't want, um, I don't want to lose the, the design by having um, too much wet paint going over the stencil in one go. In terms of building up um, the colour intensity or the opacity, then uh, it's better just to kind of keep going um, back over the stencil rather than trying to get too much colour down in one hit because that's when you'll get your, your bleeding happen. Now, what I'll do here when I'm stenciling typically is add the design in a couple of, um, couple of places around the the um the board just to get that balance and to help kind of eye travel around so you'll see me now um, when i speed up the video adding a couple of stencil designs i think i use the grid um and maybe the crosses as well so all the same designs as we've already got in play in the in the project are going on on this next la uh, layer and you'll see how i build up the stenciling um, by, inch, by kind of repeatedly stenciling in various spots on the hexagon board. that's our stenciling added uh, to the hexagon board and you can still see and as I'm just pointing out here some of that uh, those underlayers are still um, peeking through so the fact that you've used the same designs on the collage paper and stamping and then onto the stenciling will mean that the whole the whole project kind of comes together if that makes sense so the fun part of this project, of course, is going to be uh, laying out the hexagons in a way that I um, uh, like the design. And uh, I do that off camera because, of course, these things always take me ages when I to, to get things going as I want them to. And I've stuck them all down here. And what you'll see um, with the solid, some of the solid hexagons that I've adhered to the project is that I've also stamped on top of those with elements that we've been using throughout the project. So um, I'm going to show you how, um, how I do that. I'm just really kind of explaining here that I wanted to kind of go with a sweep of hexagons across, kind of slightly diagonally across the center of the project and um, try and ensure that uh, it all kind of gives you gives you kind of a, a flow, a visual flow. And what I've done is also, it's something I quite often like to do, is have some of those elements peeking out from um, beyond the edge of the um, MDF board. Um, and of course, by doing that, and I think I say this in the, in the final section of the video as well, but when doing that, um, it's always worth just thinking about painting the back of those bits that um, are showing through. Um, showing um, through so that uh, you don't get any kind of raw MDF showing from the back of the project. So in terms of stamping onto the uh, solid MDF pieces, I'd used um, as a, a blue, it's cobalt archival ink. And um, for some of the bigger pieces, it's fairly straightforward. You can just take the stamp to the, um, 
to the MDF and you can see you get a nice clear impression. But with that little, little hexagon there that I'm pointing out with a bit of the circuitry on, then I'm just going to show you how I did that. And it's really straightforward. Simply um, by adding the ink to the stamp uh, and leaving it on my work surface, just place the um, hexagon face down over the piece of the design that you want to capture um, on the MDF rather than trying to uh, stamp um, onto such a small piece of MDF by, um, by taking the stamp to the uh, surface, if that makes sense. Okay, so our project is pretty much finished and let me just talk you through a few of the, um, the steps I took in pulling it all together that I did off camera. Um, before I adhered down the MDF um, elements, I added some white splatters to the project, just so I thought it would line it up a little bit and give it a bit more contrast. Um, the fun element with it, with any project like this is, is kind of arranging all of the elements to give you your finished look. And I do like to try and ensure that um, some of the elements just go over the edge, just to give you a little bit of movement and break up that outer hexagon. So you'll see that um, some of the hexy bits um, just go past the edge of the uh, of the board, which means that obviously when you are um, uh, thinking about how it will look from the back of the project, I've just painted the, these these um, protruding areas in the stroke of midnight, um, and just gives it a nice finished look. So if somebody's looking at it from the back, they're not seeing bare MDF. I've already shown you how I've stamped onto the. Um, the hexagons to give them that look and tie in the um, the base stamping uh, with them um, with the um, the the top the top layer. I had obviously stamped and clear heat embossed um, the um, gaming uh, controller that um, sits here on the front, and I've I'll see it here. I think we can. Yeah, uh, I've just stacked it up on quite a few uh, foam pads just to give it a bit of additional curve and dimension. So I've put some adhesive on either side, but just got it raised at the centre. Um, and obviously I've added my my uh, words to complete the project using the Ransom Now Alphas. Uh, I've just uh, backed them onto different colours of uh, cardstock, cut them out in a, in a kind of slightly uneven way. And also I've... Um, just put a few of the letters on foam pads just again to give a little bit more dimension and I think that's everything that I've done really uh, it's a it's a really simple straightforward project but I think we'll make something really eye-catching and I'll make another video uh, with a card uh, that goes with this project so that uh, you would be able to gift both the board and the card uh, as, a, as a nice kind of coordinating set for somebody. I hope this gives you some ideas for making uh, really cool uh, projects for uh, men and boys. Um, and hopefully uh, you'll come back and see some further content that I add to the channel over the next few weeks. Like and subscribe and um, it will be great to have you with me as I carry on creating. Thanks very much. Make sure you do um, hop along and look at all the fab projects that the rest of the uh, participants have made. I've got their, all of their channels uh, linked in the description box below this video. And I've also put descriptions in, um, links in for all the products, Funky Fossil products that I've used in today's uh, project. So thank you again and hopefully I shall see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.